Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. Welcome back again. Thank you guys so much for joining. And I was off this weekend, but we are back now here on Monday morning. And it's hard to believe it is already February 26th of 2024, but we have lots of weather to talk about. So let's waste no time. And if you do like detailed weather breakdowns across North America, including the tropics, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the like button down below. It helps out more than you know. So let's get into the weather forecast here. We are keeping an eye on a significant storm moving across the Pacific Northwest today and downstream we have record shattering temperatures here with a strong late February ridge of high pressure out east and this is serving as a focal point for above average temperatures. Look at this afternoon. We're into the 90s here across Texas Hill Country. We're talking 92 in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, 94 with dry soil in the Abilene, Texas region, 87 in Oklahoma City, 84 in Tulsa, and near 80 at 79 in Kansas City, Missouri this afternoon. And as we go into Tuesday, more record-shattering warmth from the Midwest and Great Lakes all the way to the Gulf of Mexico here basically anywhere east of the Rockies outside of the Northern Plains will have an opportunity to see record shattering warmth on Tuesday. And then as we go into Wednesday, the storm system and associated cold front will drag some cooler air across the country, ending our streak of record shattering warmth for this week as we go in towards that Wednesday time frame. So looking at the current weather conditions as we go out the door this morning, whether it's for work, school, or just to run some errands out there, we do have some snow across southern Canada and also back here to the Pacific Northwest, the Cascades across portions of Washington State and Oregon receiving some moderate snow this morning, moderate snows up here into northern and central Idaho and western Montana as well. Otherwise, the high pressure is in firm control, lots of sunshine downstream east of the Rockies as we go through the morning here. And looking at today, here is the synoptic weather pattern. You can see high pressure ridge sinking air and firm control across the eastern U.S. With sinking air, you don't have a lot of cloud cover and thus you don't have any precipitation. So we're definitely dry across the east today. There's our significant storm system number one that's moving into the Pacific Northwest today. This will be diving into the Great Plains and upper Midwest by Tuesday, a clash of the air masses could bring an early season severe weather threat across the Midwest and Ohio Valley on Tuesday. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but that storm will eject into the Great Lakes and up into southeastern Canada by midweek on Wednesday, and that will end our streak of record-shattering warmth as we go into that Wednesday time frame. So here is the storm system starting today. There's that band of snow across southern Canada from Ontario all the way back through Manitoba, southern Saskatchewan, southern Southern Alberta and British Columbia, Canada. So watch out for snow up there. And then across the Pacific Northwest, the Cascades, Washington State and Oregon, Idaho into Western Montana, seeing the snow today. Tuesday, here comes the cold front and that's going to end our streak of record shattering warmth. But at the same time, there will be moisture around. So post frontal precipitation could give us some snowfall here for Northern Minnesota, back into the Dakotas and into Nebraska and even back into the front range across Colorado and prefrontal storms with severe weather across portions of the Ohio Valley and the Midwest. We'll keep an eye on that for Tuesday. And you can see the Storm Prediction Center is confident that there is some risk for severe weather on Tuesday with a level two out of five in the yellow, a slight risk of severe weather. And this is as far north as Michigan here. This is into the Grand Rapids and Detroit area, down here in towards places like Toledo and northwestern Ohio, much of the state of Indiana, including Indianapolis, into Illinois, so Chicago, Peoria, Springfield, and then down toward the St. Louis area and southeastern Missouri in play here on Tuesday. And then you can see the, the hazards these storms will be bringing, damaging winds in excess of 60 miles per hour, especially in this yellow shaded color. And there could be a risk for some pretty damaging hail as well. In this hashed area, that's where we could be seeing hailstones of two inches or larger in diameter. And this does include the Chicago proper area and the southern suburbs. So Joliet down into Kankakee there into northeastern Illinois, getting into north central Indiana, southern lower Michigan and northwestern portions of Ohio. We'll keep an eye on that on Tuesday. 
and a formidable tornado risk. We have a two to a 5% chance of tornadoes here within a 25 mile radius of your location here on this map. So definitely keeping an eye on that tornado risk. It does appear that the, the tornado risk is highest across Northeast Illinois, North Central Indiana, and into portions of Northwest Ohio and far, far Southern Lower Michigan as we go into Tuesday. So let's look here at the details of why we are seeing the severe weather tomorrow on Tuesday. Well, the Gulf of Mexico is open, dew points surging well into the 50s, and even a little area there of 60 degree dew points trying to make it into the land of Lincoln there in Illinois and into Indiana. So we'll keep an eye on that and that could serve as an area for elevated instability, your cape, your convective available potential energy or otherwise storm fuel across this region. The brighter the color, the better the chance you have for some thunderstorms with all that energy out here. And in the green and yellows, that is 1,000 to 2,000 joules per kilogram, weak to moderate instability. And we have a very decent trough moving in as well. Now, it didn't look this bad as we, you know, a couple days ago, this was looking like a very strong trough. It has flattened out some, so not looking at as robust of a severe weather threat, but still enough support here. And looking at the low level jet, not the greatest low level jet we've ever seen, but we definitely have to be concerned about some tornadoes out there with around four. 40 knots of low level jet as we go into Tuesday. So timing this out, Tuesday morning, scattered showers, a few isolated hailers down here into Southern Illinois, Mount Vernon area, maybe down toward the Paducah, Kentucky area. Evansville, Indiana. We'll keep an eye on that down toward the Ohio River Valley. Otherwise, Tuesday afternoon, scattered to numerous pockets of showers and thunderstorms going into Tuesday afternoon. A few of these could produce damaging winds, hail, and a couple of tornadoes. Now, it's really Tuesday evening where the peak of this event will be from around 6 p.m. through midnight all evening long. We'll be keeping an eye really centered across Indiana for the potential of severe weather as indicated by this model. And there could be some back building here with the line of severe storms mainly producing heavy rain and damaging winds across the Paducah, Kentucky area, down toward Cape Girardeau into portions of Missouri and even south of Springfield, Missouri. We'll keep an eye on that for Tuesday evening. Then as we go into early Wednesday morning, the storms will die out as our atmosphere stabilizes as we go into early Wednesday morning time frame. Any leftover severe threat here would mainly be for gusty winds or some smaller hail. Looking at Wednesday overall, you can see a snowstorm is on track across southeast eastern portions of Canada. Otherwise, there's that cold front producing some isolated storms. Probably not looking at much of a severe risk on Wednesday as we have more of a stable environment, but we'll keep an eye on it across the Mid-Atlantic and the eastern Ohio Valley by midweek. And then as we go into Thursday, the storm exits the United States and we look to the west again. There's our second significant storm with more heavy snow, almost deja vu as we go into that Thursday time frame. So now through Thursday night, here's the rainfall prospects and some decent rains, especially centered on West Virginia there. A couple inches of rain for you down there into the Charleston, West Virginia region, through the Ohio Valley, Kentucky, the Louisville region, back into portions of Lexington. We definitely could be seeing a couple of inches of rain for you. This area, the Ohio Valley, could be an area to watch for some flash flooding, but I'm not too concerned about it. This storm and cold front will be pretty progressive from west to east Tuesday into Wednesday, but we could have a couple areas that could have some ponding of water on the roadways or in low-lying areas. We'll keep an eye on that, and then that will shift across portions of the western mid-Atlantic and the eastern Ohio and Tennessee River Valley as we go into that Wednesday-Thursday time frame. Looking at snowfall prospects through the end of February, not really looking at much for the United States outside of an inch here or an inch there. Unless you live in the Pacific Northwest, the Cascades out here, Washington State and Oregon and Northern California there into the Sierras could be getting some decent snows. Otherwise, it's all southeastern Canada here with that snow track from Ontario into Quebec. Could be seeing several inches of accumulating wet snow for you. Otherwise, heading into the weekend, this is this upcoming weekend, Saturday to Sunday, the 2nd and 3rd of March. Yes, we're entering into March, hard to believe. And you can see well above normal temperatures here, almost deja vu, very warm temperatures by this time. You can see starting on Friday, late this week, there's the 50s returning. We got return flow from the Gulf of Mexico. And then as we go into Saturday here, 60s pushing further north, 70s pushing further north. And then as we go into Sunday, look at that, all again into the upper Midwest 
Midwest. We have deja vu returning across the middle of the country during that time frame. And it looks very similar, but it is a different storm. This is significant storm number two. And this looks to be potentially a little bit stronger of a trough. Now, there is some uncertainty in the strength of the trough overall and also the track of it where it ejects into the country. But we'll keep an eye on this. This type of look and pattern recognition does indicate there should be some severe weather somewhere across the middle of the country, which could be significant by late next week and also in towards that early week time frame the following week. So we'll keep an eye on that. You can see a very significant trough here even as we go into Tuesday. So Sunday night, this upcoming weekend, this is the potential here. This isn't a forecast, but we could be seeing some elevated instability making it all the way up into the, at least the central plains, but perhaps even the Midwest in towards Iowa there. And then as we go into Monday, trying to see some of that movement up here again into the land of Lincoln and Illinois, maybe, just maybe into Wisconsin on Monday. And then you can see on Tuesday, the thermodynamics start to lose its punch as it moves to the east, much like this storm will this week on Wednesday. So we'll keep an eye on that. And looking here at the lightning flash density, some early estimates and where some of these thunderstorms will set up. During the day Sunday, not really talking about anything too significant. I think Sunday night as that system and trough begins to eject somewhere across the middle of the country here, somewhere we're going to be seeing some bigger thunderstorms, whether that's up here into the upper Midwest or further south into the Southern Plains remains to be seen. But this gives you an indication that things are going to remain active as we go in towards late next weekend here and also going into early the following week. You can see we're definitely talking about some thunderstorms across the Mississippi Valley whether or not they're severe, we'll keep an eye on that. And even as you go into Tuesday time frame here on the 5th of March, definitely seeing some thunderstorms for the Southeast. So looking at this, a severe weather forecast, early indications here. This is the area of a highlighted for interest of at least a low potential for severe weather for Sunday. This could be as far north as the upper Midwest or as far south as the Southern Plains, this area will be narrowed down in the next few days. And then as we go into Monday, same deal here, we push this further east with the cold front. Anywhere across the Mississippi Valley pretty much is fair game, but this also will be narrowed down, uh, potentially up, going up in trend or down in trends with the severe weather intensity as we go into that Monday timeframe. We'll keep an eye on that. Overall, looking at the snowfall prospects from our second significant storm, this looks to be more of a southern Canada type of snow event again, especially in the European model. The GFS model again shows more southern Canada, but a little bit more snow up and around the Great Lakes. This may enhance more of the lake effect snow for the Lake Superior up here or even Lake Michigan, Lake Huron. We'll keep an eye on that as we do get closer. So nonetheless, we're going into an active pattern. We're in an active pattern. We'll keep it going as we go into early March. So stay tuned here to the weather forecast over the next several days. We'll keep you updated with more updates over that time frame. Do subscribe to the channel if you do like these detailed weather breakdowns across North America. Also be sure to press the like button down below. It helps out more than you know to get all of this information passed along to more and more people. And I hope everyone has a good rest of their Monday out there.